Drew makes an epic journey to Northern Ireland, where he goes the extra mile. Oh yeah, look at that, check it out. To visit some of the best properties. I'll go all guns blazing out, the maximum I can pay for it is 400. And the biggest salvage yards. Your team boyd? Oh no, come on. And discovers the industries that made this country great. It's a bit useless, but it's solid. Like it. Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Oh, wow. He searches this country. This is starting to be our favourite house. And abroad. Amazing. <gasps> the weird and wonderful object. What do you want for it? Twelve. He bargains hard. Eight and a half. And there's nothing he won't buy. Look at his little chaps. Look. <laughs> With help from his wife, Rebecca. Lovely. OK, so that's a sale. And a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk to gems. <laughs> this week, Drew and T are off to explore uncharted territory, crossing the water to Northern Ireland, somewhere they'd never been before. It has a strong antique heritage, and with four diverse locations lined up, Drew has high hopes for the unique Irish pieces he might find. To reach boat, it is. You love boats, don't you? Yeah, absolutely adore them. We're looking for Irish furniture, obviously. Luckily, we're going to Ireland. I know, really. I know. My great great grandmother came from Tipperary. Oh, really? It's a long way to there. Yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've heard, I don't know where I heard that. <laughs> Home to around two million people, Northern Ireland is made up of six counties, around the capital city of Belfast, which is also the location of the Northern Ireland Assembly at Stormont. It's a beautiful country, with the stunning coastline of the Giant's Causeway to the north and the dramatic Mourn mountain range down to the south. To get to that foot of Ardy, 140 miles away. We're in Lim Avadi. Right. I'm sure that's not how it's said, but that's all I can it's get close out of it. It's close enough, isn't yeah. it? It takes a lot to get your lips around it all this does, yeah, gallic, it doesn't it? It's difficult. It's as hard as Welsh. Lim Avadi is a small market town and means leap of the dog. Legend has it that the dog of the clan chief jumped the river to get help after a surprise enemy attack, saving the village. But what's of interest to Drew is just up the road, a Georgian country house filled with Georgian furniture. We are looking for the better stuff. There's no point in coming all the way here and not buying the best. We're not coming for the junk, we want the good stuff we can find. Drew and T's destination is Drenner House. Built in 1835, it's one of the world's finest examples of a Georgian country estate. In a parkland setting, and with immaculate Georgian interiors, it today earns its keep with weddings and events. But it's still the home of June Welsh. Chris runs the business with help from Cathy. Drina means a thorny place, and it was named Drina when it was built. Because we're using the house now as a business, we've had to declutter the house, so Mrs. Welsh has taken a lot of things out, uh, and some things are for sale. Well, the things in the stables have been there for a long time, and I'm afraid they've been just left and not very often to find it. I mean, it's not all obvious, and probably that's what Drew enjoys anyway. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah. Check it out. That's more like it. Very nice. Welcome to Drina. Lovely to have you. Thanks for having us. Nice to see you. Welcome too. to Drina, Julie. Thank you very much for having us. What a beautiful entrance, mate. Oh, can't wait to see inside. Oh, beautiful. So, who, who designed the house? Charles Lanyon. Okay. And uh, it was built in 1835. So, this is a Georgian era house, and it was finished just on the right at the end of the period. Yes, lovely. The house is beautiful. It's just absolutely 
up my alley the proportions the color of the stone the size of the windows the glass the wonderful light in the entranceways it's just the best another beautiful room yes this is the dining room the house is one from the furniture and it's pretty pretty damn good you know what i'm really interested in these oh they were to prop up the old boys when they had too much port yeah drunkards you used to stick it under their arms yeah. so it didn't fall over do we need a couple of them? We, we need these. Yeah, we, need, <laughs> we need one each strap into us, to be honest with you, most of the time. No, lovely. The house has been in the same family since it was built, and the formal rooms are full of original furniture. But these are family heirlooms June wishes to retain. Away. Don't worry. Table. This is absolutely untouched. Library. Yes, sweet, it's isn't that it? Very sweet. This delicate mahogany side table was made to go against a wall in a hallway or reception room and was probably used for a lamp or displaying ornaments. It's early 1800s and could be worth around £700. Well, I'm sure we could do a deal on that. Yeah, that's the one. Mm, I'll go all guns blazing out. The maximum I can pay for it is £400. I can't pay any more for it. I think I'm going to make 100 quid. OK. Sure? Mm -hmm. OK, deal, thank you. I want to do right by it, but not much, so we're going to give her £400 for it. It's the first purchase, and a lovely item, but there's not much profit in it. To make such a big trip worthwhile, Drew must find more things to buy, and he's got his hopes pinned on the stable block. This is generally where the sort of detritus and bits of furniture that aren't being used gets thrown. The house this size, the stable's this big. I'm holding out for what, what I wanted when I was over here, which was, I want Irish furniture. Right. Well, it's not very hard for me to see something I like the look of already. Yes? These. Oh. Yeah. Particularly that one. I'm hoping they're shelved into, into the interiors. Oh, that's quite useful. Are you keen, Gardner? Yes, well, that's lovely. That I'm would have been for that. hot water. Well, hot water uh, around Johnny... the house. Right, T. Watch, there's something on the top. There. It's missing its that, drawers. That's the only thing. The it bottom. Is. Nothing worse than missing your drawers. It <laughs> <laughs> doesn't look in great condition, I have to say. No, it's in terrible condition, but it's original. Hoping this one's shelved. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it's, a, it's very sweet, I have to yeah. say. These cupboards date back to the early and late 1800s. A house this size would have had many like these to store the household's bedding and linen. As well as being of interest to furniture collectors, they're also useful to restaurants and bars. With new drawers, the later cupboard could fetch around 750 pounds. The older cupboard, completely restored, could fetch around 1,500. A lot of work. But, but it's still, it's a desirable thing. Salvage expert Drew Pritchard is in new uncharted territory visiting Northern Ireland, where he's hoping to find unique Irish furniture. There's no point in coming all the way here and not buying the best. He's at Georgian country estate Drenner House, where he secured a deal on some fine 18th century furniture. I'll go all guns blazing out. The maximum I can pay for it is 400. Okay. Sure. Mm -hmm. okay. Stored in the stable block, he's found some long-forgotten cupboards. But will June accept his offer? I was going to say that this one could be what the Irish call a luck penny. A luck penny? Yes, they, they, always, it they always throw it in. I valued that one at hardly anything. Well, really, that's your luck penny. Thank you very much. The majority of the price is for one cupboard. Uh, the other one comes along to hold its hand. And you've got to strip all this horrible stuff off it. No, that's why I bought it. Oh, you're going to leave it? Yeah. Oh, do you like it? I love it. That's original paint. Oh, I see. That's original paint over the pine carcass there, which you can see in there. Oh, right. That's what gives it the value. If this was in pine and all polished to death... It would look awful. It would look awful and I wouldn't want to even go near it. Well, I'm delighted you've got it. Wonderful. Please, please, it's been worth the trip. And all I got was... Well, it didn't can. <laughs> <laughs> With all the estate's furniture dumping... Library. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? Yes, lovely, lovely room. Gorgeous. Mm. 
There's a few things in here that I like the look of. Um, that chair, that chair. Yes, a pink chair. Let's go and look at it. Would this be something you'd be willing to get rid of? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Um, depends what you uh, offer for it. Well, it's a nice one, but they usually go in the seat because they're very diminutive and, yeah, it's... Sadly. Yeah, well, it's got a fair bit of age to it. This chair is just elegance personified. It is beautiful, and I think this is an 18th century one as well. The wing-back chair first appeared in the early 1700s and quickly became one of the most popular chairs. Um, 750. Eight. Thank you. That's great, thank you. The price I paid for the chair is about 800 pounds. I'm going to spend a further, probably two to 300 pounds on it, and I reckon I can get 1,500 for it. Yeah, I'd be happy with that. I'm sure it'll look better when you restore Well, we'll take it. that, we'll get that awful drain on off it, and um, we'll restore that. Put it back in a white linen so somebody else can decide what they want to do with it. Yes, I'm sure. It'll look lovely. Excellent. OK. Yep, we'll have that on the list. Bought some beautiful things. I just loved it and I thought he was very knowledgeable and he was very gentle and kind and he just loved the house. And that was very important to me. Every sort of fibre of my being wants a house like that. Then you realise how much it takes to sort of, yeah, get one. You have to be a rock star, don't you, really? Well, have you got what it takes to be a rock star? Me? Yeah. Easy. Apart from any discernible musical talent. Yeah, that's always a worry, isn't it? Mm. Well, anyway, I never bothered the Spice Girls. <laughs> Four purchases. The next location is 60 miles south in the capital. Right, Pete, we're in Belfast. So it is, I believe, is the full name. So, so it is. Yeah, Belfast. So it is. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Ah, so it is. <laughs> it is what it is. So it is. <laughs> <laughs> Belfast became rich during the 18th and 19th centuries, with its wealth coming from linen, tobacco and shipbuilding. Today, the dockyards, which at their height were the biggest in the world, and where Harland and Wolf built the Titanic, are now relatively quiet. After 30 years of the troubles, regeneration is changing the face of the city. For a salvage hunter, renovation and change is good news. It's a beautiful... Much of Belfast's surplus items end up at the next location. On the square is three storeys and 36,000 square feet of everything and anything second-hand. It's a veritable treasure trove, owned by Justin Lowry. I inherited this building and we needed to do something with it. We started as an auction house, but we were getting more and more people coming through the door who just wanted to buy. So now we're like a hybrid between an assignment store, shop and an auction house. You name it, we stock it. Anything from small knick-knack right up to thousands of pounds antique. Every day, lorry loads just pull up. We're the, sort of the only place in Belfast that does this sort of thing. So now it all comes to us. Ah, uh, here you go. Blimey, look at that. That's a big old... It is that's a big, a big lump, isn't it? Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Better get started. Come on in. There's a lot more to see. <laughs> oh, fab. OK, so explain to me what, what you do here, then. What is it? Stuff comes in, we sell on behalf of other people, and we put a price on it, we put our commission on top, and every month it doesn't sell, we drop it 20%. And after three months, it moves down to the end of the street, into the auction. I see. OK, all right, all right. First impressions walking into On the Square is it is a very, very random mix of stuff. There is all sorts, from brand-new pieces of furniture right through to ancient pieces of old printing presses. It's a... An odd mix, and an odd mix can work really well for me. Oh, blimey, so what's this place, then? This is the incoming bay. Ah, so how long does it take to fill up like this? Uh, this was emptied last Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. This is basic. With
with so much coming through the door and over 9,000 items for sale, Drew needs to get started and is taken straight to the area the public doesn't get to see. Uh, OK. These stackers. How, are they really cheap? Have they been chucked up here? Yeah, cheap enough. Doing 12 pound each. Mm, that's cheap. Are they blues nice? Yeah, that one. I don't like the dark. Blues. No. There's only one or two of those. The colour on the frame is what's really attractive. There's one other little sort of trade secret with them, which is they stack. Now, that might not seem like a lot. But if you're doing a small restaurant in London, Manchester, Liverpool or Edinburgh, you need space. And chairs take up a lot of room. If you're able to stack them up, all the better. These chairs made from steel with leatherette upholstery. Each chair could be worth around £40. I'll take all of them that aren't damaged for a tenner a chair. Twelve's the best I could do a pay That's chair. yours. That's yours. All right, yeah, we'll go through those. Take as many of those as we can. Only the light ones and only the ones without any rips. No problem. £12 each for the chairs. Bargain, yes, we'll take them all. Needing to buy as many items as possible that will make a profit, Drew's found a room full of stools. How much are they? Each. Your team point? Oh, no, come on. Best they do is be 15. We knock them out at 45. Yeah, I'll take him all. Yeah. And once he starts, there's no stopping him. Great, wonderful, thank you. At the finish, he's bought 45 stools and chairs. And as they head back through the building, something else catches his eye. Oh, these are good. Yeah. Are these yours, or...? No, but these are in from a dealer, so there's not an awful lot of room in it. Really? They're very hard to get, though. 700 quid for the pair. Blimey, Charlie. That's a, that's a fair bit of money. These are made by, I recognise them straight away, a company called Thonay. I've had hundreds of Thonay chairs. I've never had a pair of benches. In fact, I've never had a single one of those benches. And there's just something about them. 19th century German-Austrian cabinet maker Michael Thonay designed and manufactured lightweight chairs using the process of steam bending timber. His cafe are rare and could retail for around £500 each. What can they be? 600. Has he given you a bottom line? What, 550 is the best I could do on them. That's cut a lot of our commission. Yeah, I know, I don't, I, I yeah. know, I'm not trying to make it hard for you, yeah. it's just, they're just too much money. But they are a hard thing to find. I think it's good just the rareness of the three-seater. I've, not, see, lot I've not seen one. No. 550? Richard is salvage shopping for the first time in North. Yeah, I'll take him off. Yeah. yeah. 20 quid a piece. Do that. He spotted a pair of benches and has negotiated down from £700. But will he pay Justin's final price? But 550 is the best I could do on them. 550. Yes. Those. We ended up at 550. That's more or less where I want to be with them. I couldn't really pay any more for them. This shop, if I lived nearby, I would be in here every day. The volume of stock they have coming into that loading bay is phenomenal. The favorite buy of the day was a pair of Thon A hall benches. What they are is something that's well designed, unusual, and a pair and unrestored in good condition. are part way through their Northern Irish journey. Today they're leaving the city and driving 30 miles south to County Armagh and the town of Portadown. It's here that they'll be visiting a business linked to the pub industry. One thing Ireland is not short of is bars. I hadn't noticed. Yeah, yeah. We could just visit one maybe before we leave. I'm not going to be reading scriptures tonight. I'm just going to no. make sure... No. 
I was just going to sit and read poetry, but I thought we could probably go to a pub, and some people fell out, fell over after the game. <laughs> so it must affect your balance <laughs> terribly. <laughs> They're off to meet Gerard Derry, owner of Derry's Limited. Established in the 1980s, they supply furnishings for pubs in Ireland and around the world. There's a workshop making new and reproduction furniture, as well as warehouses of pub memorabilia and architectural antiques. My father was an antique dealer, so he was himself. And then we moved on, they got to into the business then, we started to develop and uh, doing bar furniture. Uh, there was some very quirky pieces here, so unusual things you just wouldn't find everywhere. And so I think there'd be plenty for him to pick from here. Hello. How do you do? No, <laughs> it stands out from it's the country. From the <laughs> can we have a look inside? Oh, you can, certainly. Come on ahead. Oh, my. Are you kidding? That wooden Jaguar? Yeah, yeah neat tape. Yeah. It wouldn't go. <laughs> yeah, the car, the wooden wheels and the wooden engine. You could carve someone up on the motorway. <laughs> they have a full-size wooden Jaguar E-type. <laughs> I've never seen the like of it in my life. It's absolutely mad. Oh, are you selling it as well? Oh, yeah. How much? Six and a half grand with a full MOT. Are you tempted? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one car I'm not going to be buying today. Drew's not in the market for a wooden car, but that's not the only thing with wheels that's caught his eye. How much is that? 1,500. Does it run? Uh, I never had it running. I think it would go. That'll yeah, go. Just, just, that'll go. go. It's done. That'll go. Blimey. Not what I expected. I came here looking for, <laughs> for furniture. <laughs> I've come to Ireland and I've fallen in love with a black beauty and it's not Guinness. It is just this fantastic little 90cc bike. This Japanese Kawasaki M10 motorbike is in fact a rare model produced in 1966. With its 90cc engine, it was one of Kawasaki's first small capacity street bikes. In mint condition, it could be worth around 2,000 pounds. What a grand buyer. I suppose what this all wants to do is split the difference. Often that make me feel that happy immediately, and I have to have it. I can hear it running. I can I can feel how it's going to be when I'm riding it over the moon. To make back the cost of the bike, not to mention the trip, Drew needs to get down to business. Okay, so this is more the antique, yeah, yeah, the mix, a mixture. I have to actually do some proper work now, T. <laughs> what? Actually buy something I'm going to sell, sell. <laughs> not for you. <laughs> You got, got the bits for these? No, I don't have the fittings for them. You don't have the fittings? No. Mm. These opaque glass shades are from the 1950s and most likely came out of a pub. Once they're fitted with suspension chains, ceiling hooks and rewired, they could sell for around £250 each. What sort of money are they? For that one? Yep. That one? Yep. That one? That's it. Oh, the one at the ends. What about this one? Yeah, that's the same money. 20 pounds. 20 quid? Same. 20 pounds for any shades on here. There's another one of those there. Yep. Yep. I'll have a deal. Marvellous, thank you. Something I buy an awful lot of is lighting. I'll buy galleries, chain, ceiling fittings, you name it, I'll buy it, whatever it is. Because after a time, you end up with a huge collection of stuff like we have. So you're able to make up other lights. Incomplete really knocks the price. That uh, wax head up there. 120. Can we get it down and have a look at it? Yeah, sure. They, they, they don't survive so well, those, do they? That's in that's very good shape, that. <laughs> okay, get on. What sort of age would you have on him? 1930, would you? Got a very strange look, hasn't he? It might look a bit creepy, but he just has a very odd, far away, distant expression. And even the cracks are attractive, and it's on an old piece of wood, and it's more or less complete. Um, I like things like that, so, you know, you buy what you like, don't you? <laughs> There's a passing resemblance there, T. This wax mannequin is thought to be French and probably dates back to the 1920s. Used for shop window dressing, this one has glass eyes and real human hair. It could be worth around £300. 120, 100 quid? OK. Yeah? Deal done. He will probably end up with another dealer. 
probably in the States. Uh, they are very, very... With his shopping spree over, it's now time to load up. The only thing I'm going to, I'm slightly concerned about is in Wales, and it's, it's the missus, and uh, I'm not sure how she's going to take another wheeled thing arriving at the house. That's been very interesting, so it has. Drew has bought a few pieces from us here. He got a motorbike, worth the money as well. <laughs> the profitable piece of the day was buying all of those light shades. We'll make some really good money on those. I think he was happy with it, what he got, and I'm happy with what I've got, so we're all, hopefully we can do business again sometime. Done. So it's happy. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Jared, thank you very Sorry much. For the road. Thank Pleasure. you. Thank you for the business. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank call, call again. Definitely for sure. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. See you later. Right. See you now. It's the final day of salvage hunting. And as they head back down the country, Drew and T are going to call in at a location in Banbridge that's synonymous with Northern Ireland a linen factory. Thomas Ferguson, this place is called. And Irish Lynn, you know anything about it? Yeah, uh, no, it's good. It's good. That's it. uh, your knowledge base on this is exactly the same as mine. <laughs> The 20th century, Northern Ireland was the most important linen-making centre in the world. However, where once there were over 200 mills, today there are just a handful, with the Thomas Ferguson factory one of the last. Drew and T will be meeting Jude Neely, who's in charge of product development. It's in 1854, and we've been weaving high-end, high-quality Irish linen ever since. We do make for just about every royal family in the world. Supplied all the presidents. Barack Obama's shirt is actually in here somewhere. A thriving factory, this is no clearance job. However, after moving location in the 1990s and more recent renovations, there are items surplus to requirements, which could be of interest to Drew. He's bound to see things as he goes around because we're sort of littered with the stuff. And to be honest, I'd be glad to get rid of it because I'm a girl and I think it looks untidy. Hi there. Hi, Drew, good to meet you. Hi. Tea. How are you doing? You okay. Do you want to come on through? Yes, yeah, please. Lovely. The first, which then goes on to make tablecloths, tea towels, and bedding. But Drew's not interested in buying linen. Has this always been in the factory? This has always been in the factory. Do you, how many have you got? You're going to love this. There either are some, or they were thrown in the skip last week. No. Yeah. Really? Really. There'll be some that would be maybe missing two panels or three panels. OK, so if they're going in the skip, what are they going to cost me today? Well, this one hasn't gone in the skip. Yet. Because, it, no, it's solid. I know, it's solid. It's, it's solid. a bit useless, but it's solid. Is like it? it. Amongst the loom, there is an old mill trolley. This one, because of it's only ever had linen in it, it's like new. It's never got any dents or bashes in it. Fabric around the factory. One like this will probably end up in a clothing retail store and could be worth around £400. 150 quid, because it's a bit too tall to do anything with. What about 225? What about 180? What about 220? What about, about from Yorkshire? 170? No! It's the final leg of the Northern Irish Adventure. Drew is at one of the last remaining linen factories in the region, where he's at loggerheads with Jude over a deal on a mill trolley. What about 225? What about 180? What about 220? What about 170? No! Call it a deal? No. Oh, go on! Come on then. Soft touch for a fiver. <laughs> I got it for 185. It's more than I wanted to spend on something like that, but it's a really good clean item. As it's still a working factory, much of the excess furniture is stored away in outbuildings. So what's out here? Sheds. Um, well, they used to be the bicycle sheds, but they're sort of a dumping ground now. Oh, good. Oh, so right. you'll say... Ah, lots of bits of machinery and odds and okay. sods and... Ah, here you go. These, these, out the, these are on out the factory. What, those? Yeah. Yeah, we just changed the um, workroom, you know, engineer's room? Yeah. About four weeks ago. 
So we took those down. I'll be a few of those. Yeah, okay, cool. Is there anything in here for a second? Do you want the boxes as of them? As many as you've got. Something else that I buy, you know, religiously, whenever I see them. Green enamel industrial lights. I love them. We sell a couple of thousand a year at least. So whenever I can buy them, we buy them. These pendant lights date back to the 1930s and were one of the most widely used types of factory lights. Rewired and fitted with ceiling hooks, they can sell for around £130 each. £150 quid. £25 a pop. Oh, come on, you can do a bit better than that. A little bit. £30 because they're clean. Hey, OK. Sure? Uh, I'm OK. I'm, um, do you know why? Why? Because you said they're clean and I thought, oh, jeez, that's clean. You're that's clean. Joking. That's clean. No, no, we just, we just had over a thousand out of the factory and there was that much dirt over every single thing. So these special tea towels to show Drew. So really traditional tea towels. Yeah. Right. And here you'll see. <laughs> no way! That's Hello. fantastic! Brilliant. Nah. I love that. Dave laid on a lovely surprise for us today. I had no idea. And they've made us some tea towels. So we're going to be going back to Wales with eight Irish tea towels with salvage hunters written on. <laughs> It's been fun, we've enjoyed it, we've bought some stuff. Lights I buy hundreds, if not thousands, every year. And I managed to pick up another six. I'll, I'll go somewhere to buy one or one hundred. Well, I've had a good laugh at them. On my Northern Irish trip, I've been to some amazing places, this being one of them. To go to the last and the best of anything is always a privilege. So to come here today and do this, I'm very, very happy. It's been a great trip. Hello. Yeah, it's all in. Done? Yeah. Look. What's that? Fantastic. Okay, so what are these then? I'll take those off you. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Thank you. Safe, thank, you. thank you. Well, you don't often get that, do you? No. Well, you never get that. <laughs> I think that's the end of our little Irish journey, so um, we'll bugger off back to Wales. Brilliant. Might have a bite of Guinness at Dublin on the way back. After a week away, it's time to show the new stock to the team. Bigora, Bigora, top Bigora. of the morning to you, to be sure. Was it worth it? Check it out. All van. Drew's opened the shutter at the back of the lorry and it's jammed to the hilt. It's fantastic. We went to Derry. Jared Derry, lovely fella. Check that out. Oh, wow. So if you can get a very, very strong gallery and something that's got a sort of brutalist industrially look to it, that would be great. You got anything? We must have. We must have some. Must have. Check these out. All the lights, 20 quid each. It's 20 pounds, 20 pounds. That's a good price, 20 pounds. Okay, that crumble <laughs> looks familiar. We'll talk about that later. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I saw on the back of the van, under a blanket, a motorcycle wheel. Here we go again, another bike. Like that's a motorbike. Behold, I just fell in love with it. It's just lovely. Look at that. 1966, so it's a really early 90cc M10 Kawasaki. You know what? What? I quite like that. It's fantastic, isn't it? It's little. Is it running? Yeah. Hear it. Yeah. You know that's going to go, isn't I'm it? I'm going to go. Yeah. Every now and again, something just gets you. Cool. I mean, it's so trendy. And it's small. It's, you know, it's manageable. It's not sort of scary. I love it. Hallelujah. Happy oh, days. Not for me. Yes, darling. Please. When's your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no problem. Yeah. Come well, on, let's get it in. Isn't that fantastic? Yes. Now, I'm not cross. These. Stacking chairs, cheap. £15 a piece. Different colour. Good colour. Let's get them off. Come on. Chop, chop. Northern Ireland Hall, there's one item that's got Drew so excited, 
He wants to tackle the restoration himself. Occasionally, there's a job that comes in that I really want to do. There's something like this is out. And every now and again, they sign it. Port Rush. So it is an Irish armchair. Yes. That's incredibly exciting. That's so exciting. That's ridiculous. Drew wants to remove everything that's not original, which will mean stripping it back to the frame. This looks dramatic. I'm actually not touching the chair at all. This is just getting the fabric off. To finish the job will take several hours. So whilst Drew continues his painstaking work, Carl is starting to build new lamps from the £20 shades. I've actually got some galleries for it. I'm just hoping I've got one the right size. Two. Yep. That's a heavy light. Next stage is to cut a new length of light fitting, rewire it with a vintage style flex, and complete the job with a bulb. Alright, let's hang this one up. See what it looks like. Okay. And the moment of truth. In the workshop next door. Gavin is beginning his mammoth task of restoring all the chairs and stools. Each seat needs its screws tightening and then cleaning down with wire wool. The next stage is to wax the entire stool. There's metal and stuff, you put white on it, like clear wax, light wax. The metal tends to go white. One down, 22 to go. The stately home of Drenner, the mahogany side table is heading to a Georgian manor house in Essex. The cupboards are a big job and put on the back burner for the moment. But the 18th century wing back chair is now finally stripped to its frame. Now the chair is naked, I'm really happy with it. We did find some names on it. It says J. Eastwood Port Rush. Um, that isn't the manufacturer. We haven't been able to find out anything about the manufacturer. The guy made it, so I'm presuming he was the upholsterer. And the good news is it is um, going to a friend of mine, uh, another dealer, who we really have. Um, but that's trade to trade, and I'm happy to do it. The metal stools from On The Square have gone back across the water, being bought by a film prop house in Ireland. And the rare Thonne benches were snapped up by an interior design firm in London. The lampshades from Derry's are all now complete and up on the website, as is the wax head. That's the face of a serial killer. The mill trolley from the linen factory will soon be in a high-end audio shop in a converted mill in Stockton-on-Tees. Carl begins stripping down the vintage motorcycle and gets to the root of the problems. To clean the rust from the fuel tank, it's rinsed with brake and clutch cleaner. Right, let's put it all back together. The tank is reattached, and Carl adds a new battery. All oh, works, that's good. Finally, in goes the petrol, and then it's the moment of truth. breathe new life into the Kawasaki. Time for Drew to give it a spin around his grounds. Boys in their toys. It's surprisingly nippy whipping around and not selling. That's what I planned on doing as soon as I saw it. Fell in love with it. Great, over the moon with it. <laughs> 